Languages, material versus method. I, like many people, came to the conclusion that I was terrible at languages. I suffered through Spanish for junior high, first year of high school, and uh, the sum total of my knowledge was pretty much donde esta el baño. And I wouldn't even catch the response. Sad state of affairs. Then I transferred to a different school, sophomore year, and I had a choice of other languages. And most of my friends were taking Japanese, so I thought, why not punish myself? I'll do Japanese. Six months later, I had the chance to go to Japan. And my teachers assured me, they said, don't worry, you'll have Japanese language classes every day to help you cope. It'd be an amazing experience. My first overseas experience, in fact. So my parents encouraged me to do it. I left, I arrived in Tokyo, amazing. Couldn't believe I was on the other side of the world. Met my host family, things went quite well, I think, all, all things considered. My first evening, before my first day of school, I said to my mother very politely, please wake me up at 8 a.m. So, but I didn't say, I said, pretty close. But I said, please rape me at 8 a.m. <laughs> You've never seen a more confused Japanese woman. <laughs> and I walked into school, and a teacher came up to me and handed me a piece of paper, and I couldn't read any of it, hieroglyphics. It could have been because it was kanji, so Chinese characters adapted into the Japanese language. I asked him what this said, and he goes, ah, okay, okay. World history, calculus, kōbun, kōbun, traditional Japanese, and so on. And it came to me in waves. There had been something lost in translation. The Japanese classes were not Japanese instruction classes, per se. They were the normal high school curriculum for Japanese students. The other 4,999 students in the school who were Japanese, besides the American. And that's, that's pretty much my response. <laughs> and that set me on this panic-driven search for the perfect language method. I tried everything. I went to Kino Kunya. I tried every possible book, every possible CD. Nothing worked until I found this. This is the Joyo Kanji Hyo. This is a tablet, rather, or a poster of the 1,945 common use characters as determined by the Ministry of Education in 1981. Many of the publications in Japan limit themselves to these characters to facilitate literacy. Some are required to. And this became my holy grail, my Rosetta Stone. And as soon as I focused on this material, I took off. And I ended up being able to read Asahi Shimbun, Asahi newspaper, uh, about six months later, so a total of 11 months later, and went from Japanese 1 to Japanese 6. I ended up doing translation work at age 16 when I returned to the US. And have continued to apply this material over method approach to close to a dozen languages now, someone who was terrible at languages, and at any given time, speak, read, and write five or six. And this brings us to the point, which is, it's oftentimes what you do, not how you do it, that is the determining factor. And this is the difference between being effective, doing the right things, and being efficient, doing things well, whether or not they're important. And you can also do this with grammar. I came up with these six sentences after much experimentation. Having a native speaker allow you to deconstruct their grammar by translating these sentences into past, present, future. We'll show you subject, object, verb, placement of indirect, direct objects, gender, and so forth. From that point, you can then, if you want to acquire multiple languages, alternate them so there's no interference. And we can talk about that if anyone's interested. And now, I love languages.